All right, so here's part two of solving for the coordinates of this centroid right here. Now, if you haven't seen part one, I highly recommend watching that first because um, we have already solved some of the foundational tools we need to solve for uh, our y coordinate. Now, in the previous video, we solved for the x coordinate of our centroid of this little shaded area right here. Now, in this continuation of this series, we are going to find the centroid of the y coordinate or the y coordinate centroid of this little area right here. So, yc, in other words. So, yc should be uh, the y bar times dA over the integral of our dA. Okay? So let's go ahead and solve for this. Now, uh, this one should be a little bit easier. Um, and I say a little bit easier than the x coordinate because the algebra isn't as compact. So this should be a little bit shorter, I would say. Okay, so what is our y bar first? So we want to know what our y bar is. So y bar is actually just going to be if we draw our y bar to the centroid of this little piece right here, it's actually just going to be a coordinate of y. Um, so y bar is just simply y. Why? Because why not? Um, yeah, no, it's, it's just y because when you're... Uh, going up to the y coordinate it's actually going to be whatever y coordinate of your equations that you have over here of the centroid okay that's great so now let's go ahead and solve for our centroid so this is going to be our integral of our y bar we'll just substitute that in with y and then our dA. So in the previous video, we said dA to be this whole expression right here. It's equal to this. So let's go ahead and replace that. So actually, let me make my parentheses a little bit larger. So it's going to be yA over b minus a over b squared times y squared times dy over our integral of dA. Now we have solved for our dA over here in the previous video. I'm just going to leave it for the sake of clean, cleanliness. I'm just gonna leave it as the integral of dA and we'll leave that in or we'll plug that in later. Okay, now what are our limits here? So our limits with respect to dy, we've made all of our dy cross sections we sum all of these little infinitesimally small dy's, pretend that they're all infinitesimally small, it's going to be from zero to b. So our y coordinates with respect to y. So it should be, I'm gonna write it here and then I'll uh, uh, foil in this y over here in this next step right here. So from zero to y, or for, sorry, from zero to b of y squared, times a over b minus a over b squared times y cubed. All of this with respect to dy. And all of this is divided by our integral of dA. Okay, let's go ahead and I'm gonna draw a line to, to note that this is uh, some other information that we've solved for in the previous video. So let's go ahead and solve for this. Go, let's just go ahead and integrate it. Why not? Uh, so with respect to y, we should get uh, y cubed uh, times a over 3b minus y cubed or y to the fourth over times a over 4b squared evaluated from zero to B, okay? Let's go ahead and plug these values in and let's not, let's not forget about this portion on the bottom. All right, so plugging in B for Y, we get B cubed 
times a over 3b minus b to the fourth times a over 4b squared over the integral of our dA's. All right, so now we can see that we can actually cancel out a couple of these terms. So I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to denote that as uh, cancellation of a couple of our B factors. All right. So this should simplify to B squared over 3 times A minus B squared times A over 4. And we can combine these because these are like terms. All right. Now, if we combine these, let's get a common denominator of 12. Uh, it should be 4 over 12 minus 3 over 12. So we should end up having uh, AB squared over 12 divided by our DA. So let's divide by our DA. And we said D, our integral of DA is AB times, or sorry, A times B over 6. So let's divide it by AB over 6. Now, let's multiply this by its reciprocal. So we should have AB squared over 12 times 6 over AB. And... Uh, we simplify all these terms, it should end up just being b over 2. All right. So that is the y coordinate of our centroid of this area right here, this little shaded area. Okay. So to recap, our x coordinate, which we found in the previous video, was uh, 2 fifths times A. Our Y coordinate of the centroid is B over 2. Now you can say, now A and B are any number, right? You could say A could be like 5, A could be 5, B could be 10. All you need to do is replace A with 5, for example. So if you said A is 5, you would end up getting that the x coordinate would be 2. Now, if we said b is 10, then we could say the y coordinate of the centroid is 5. a and b are arbitrary values. So uh, you can say a and b are uh, any arbitrary value. We just, in this video, uh, we kept these numbers as just a and b. Um, but if you really wanted to, you could. Uh, have a problem where a and b could be an actual number or in which you could solve for so uh that's it for this video uh hope that you enjoyed this little mini series of the centroid problems and uh, if you have any questions comments concerns or any feedback you would like to give please let me know in the comment section below and if you enjoyed this video also please consider uh, subscribing to the channel so that way uh, I can make more videos like these. All right. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.